What is the source of all living matter? In Attack on Titan, we never actually got information on what the source of all living matter is, but with information from the manga and some research on Norse mythology, we can piece together what that thing is, and in this video, I believe I have your answer. So get your popcorn, sit down and get ready because I'm about to give you a solid explanation on what this creature actually is. First of all, we know that Isayama draws inspiration from Norse mythology. And by looking into Norse myth, we can find the answers on what the hallucinogenia really is. Let's explore what we already know. We know the creature came into contact with Emir Fritz and gave her power. Secondly, according to the information guides we get in the anime, the creature felt a pity towards Emir Fritz and decided to help her. Zeke tells Armin that the sole purpose of every living creature is to evolve, reproduce and survive. In the same manga chapter, we see a handful of the creature's species drifting about in the ocean, thus confirming that there used to be a lot of these creatures about back in those days. What this tells us is that the creature that came into contact with Emir is either the last of its kind or one of the many still hiding underground on Earth. According to Norse myth, the first giant, Ymir, was created out of a substance called ether. Ether is a liquid substance and the origin of all living things. Anyone who possesses it can use it to create anything. It also acts as a poison or venom from the creatures that can actually produce this organically. So there are creatures out there that can produce ether. Since the hallucinogenia, it's called the source of all living matter, we can connect it to ether. According to Norse myth, ether can be produced by a giant snake called Yomugander and other serpents. It wouldn't be too far-fetched for us to call this creature a prehistoric snake or worm that managed to survive until the day that it met Emir Fritz. I'm speculating that just like Yomugander, the hallucinogenia has the biology to create ether. It then finds a host to eject the ether into. The creature does this in order to use the ether to fuse itself to the victim's spine and hijack its nervous system. The ether simultaneously does this and brings the victim's desires to life in exchange. That would be the supposed deal that Emir made with the devil. The spine of Emir and all her subjects hijacked by this creature and turned into potential hosts in exchange for the power of the ether to create the first giant just like in Norse myth. We can assume the reason it latches onto other living beings is simply a survival tactic to multiply itself into millions of spines so it can revive itself once the current host dies. And it wanted to survive and multiply like all life forms according to Zeke. Now, the reason why the creature needs a host is probably because it cannot use its own venom on itself or it would surely you know, have done that after all. The creature only grew into a titanic size after the host used the ether to create the founding titan. I'm talking about the time when the creature latched onto Eren's head when he activated the founding titan. It was tiny, but after Eren created the founding titan and used its power, the creature grew to a titanic size. So that also is a benefit for the creature. It is evolving and becoming something better than what it used to be before it came into contact with Emir Fritz. According to the manga, Emir used the power to create an undying body, as well as a dimension where her and her subjects' souls could live on forever. At that moment in time, when Emir was being hunted by the king, she needed a body to withstand the brutal attacks dealt to her, hence the creation of a regenerative titan body. A strong desire not to perish from the damage she had already taken created the parts and in combination the power of the titans. Now that we know that the source of all living matter is a snake or serpent that can create ether, let's look at examples of how everything about this creature is portrayed in Attack on Titan. When Emir creates the parts, underneath her feet lies the ether disguised in the form of sand or the best way for the human mind to perceive and interact with the power of creation. It is also likely she reverts into her innermost child inside the parts because this is the age that people are the most creative and obviously she uses this creativity to interact with the ether and make things out of it. 
or it could also mean that this was just the age when she received the power. She then uses the sand or ether to create titans and anything that the kings command to her. In the living world, the ether takes the form of spinal fluid. We all know what happens when spinal fluid comes into contact with Eldians, they turn into titans, right? So most likely the creature injected this into Yumifritz and turned her into the first titan. I believe once the creature is attached to a spine, it replicates itself and multiplies in the offsprings of other hosts, thus creating the subjects of Ymir. Once the host dies, it transfers its consciousness to a new Eldian baby who then inherits the infected spine. If Reiner can transfer his consciousness to his titan, then it is not far-fetched for the creature to actually do the same thing. And in fact, because the past exists, the creature can actually use the past to transfer his conscience onto another Eldian. Now let's talk about one ability that actually matches with Norse mythology here. Yeah? So according to Norse myth, Jormugandr can spray poison to fill the air and the water. This actually sounds familiar because we've seen the creature do this. If this creature was inspired by Jormugandr, then it makes sense for it to be able to spray its venom or ether into the air like it did in its final efforts to defend itself and obviously the ether creates titans so that makes sense why the creature was able to summon a whole titan army to come to its defense now let's talk about how the creature survived because in the final page of chapter 139 we see another abnormal tree which stands out from the rest the original creature was evidently capable of dramatically affecting organic life in its vicinity a tree which stood over the anomaly in ancient times grew to immense proportions compared to those surrounding it. This heavily implies that there is a creature underneath the tree as a child is seen entering through the stem in the same fashion as Emir Fritz did a long time ago. So then how did the creature actually survive? I can only think of two possibilities here. I want to know what you think in the comment section. Since it is the creature's venom that actually creates the power of the titans and not the creature itself. It would make sense why it survived while the power of the titans disappeared in chapter 139, as the titans were a byproduct of its fusion with Emir. So, with Emir no longer wanting to stay in the past and Armin's team forcefully breaking off the deal that the creature made with Emir and separating them, I believe that the creature survived because the power of the titans was a creation of Emir not the creature the creature just gave it the power that's what it is so the titans disappearing has nothing to do with the creature i believe the original creature hid remnants of itself inside erin's head either that or it left behind an egg of some sort after all there used to be a lot of them running around in the past it wouldn't be far-fetched to say that it laid eggs and gave birth to save its species from total extinction this would leave the new creature alone inside Eren's head, growing again, waiting for a new host. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. The next video is, what would happen if a male ate the female titan and transformed?